Good afternoon ladies and gentlemen, it's Greg here again with the uh, promised review of another kit which I actually bought with the last of my uh, YouTube money so at least I've got something out of YouTube not a lot but I'll get some right so it's a new uh, Blitz or Tacom uh, Yad Tiger with the uh, options 2 in 1 of the 128mm pack L66 and the 88mm pack L71 and as you can see by the cover, if I can stop the glare, you've got this extra large box on the back. One would presume it's for the recall for the uh, 128mm. I could be wrong. I'm just thinking something along with, you know, with the uh, Firefly, having to extend the, uh, the recoil. Maybe wrong, but it's just something I thought about. So it's a nice striking box art again. Um, doesn't say this one's by. Can't see it's Jason, that's on the border ones, but oh, I see it's yeah, Jason again. This guy's phenomenal work, isn't he? Can't get rid of that bloody glare, can we? There we go. Yeah, so it's uh, Attack on Kit Stroke Blitz, and it's a 135 scale, and it's uh, the number is 0, sorry, number is 8008. There we go, on there. On the sides, we have, see, with the option of just a normal. Um, Yad Tiger and the one with the extra long barrel and the box on the back. Uh, it just says Panzer Tiger Auschwitz, Yad Tiger, blah blah blah, Germany 1945 with the L66. And then we got a Germany 45 again with the 8.8 centimeter pack as well. Ausch B. Panzer. Panzer. I can't write. Can't pronounce it. I'm not even going to attempt to. So you can see in the background you've got a king tiger as well there. Or I presume it's a king tiger. Doesn't know it could be something else, but who knows? Right on the other side is we tack on. We get the uh, sprue, the sprue tree map. What we got there? So we got P uh, decals, this, that, and the other. We get a metal barrel with it as well, which is always nice. And you know, fairly straightforward build as these things usually are, the, uh, the larger German vehicles. So we'll, we'll have a look what's in the box. I've had a quick scout through before when I got it, but uh, not really a lot in there to, to uh, look at really, but there's plenty to look at I suppose with the plastic. So let me just, yeah, I can put that there for now. Let's just go from here. So we got the, uh, usually with the tack home, you get the, uh, the track jig, which is always nice. Very straightforward to use, obviously tells you in the instructions. Uh, and that came with it as well, obviously for the protection. So, this came from China, but I with China, I've got to do a nice company from uh, China called Dong Grocery. And they're on eBay. And at nine times out of ten, or ten, I've never had a problem with them. You get the kit within a fortnight, which is pretty good for uh, from there. Considering sometimes you wait in a fortnight to get it from anywhere in the UK it can be at times but anyhow let's let's dive this and get back onto what we're doing so we'll first we'll take out the uh, the large lump of plastic first the actual uh, upper hull and I have to say it's it's uh, it's got plenty of great detail on there and gives you options I think I'll probably add to the texture on there like I've done with the Sturm Tiger but uh, it's, it's a nice looking hull again nice texture on the front as well the rolled steel but you can if you don't you don't have to add it just wonder if it would last with the paint and they've got nice weld seams along the front so yep not a bad piece to start with as you can see on the uh, got a slight texture but you can also make it better and again with the texture on the side and on the roof so that's the main bit of plastic out at work Right, let's start with these, they're resealable bags usually. Uh, yes they are. So we have two screws in this bag. Not identical. So first things first, we'll look onto this. We have muck guard, part of the engine plate, the part of the gun barrel, jack, uh, shovel, little bits and gun cradle. Jack box, 
Yeah, not bad detail at all. Not bad at all. That is very good. Good look guards. Uh, part for the barrel for the uh, for the barrel and a jack and jack box and the gun crate the gun cradle as well. There's a little shovel of pioneer tools on that one. And on this one, spruce C, we have the exhausts, the sea shoes, the track hangers for the sides of the uh, casemate, lifting eyes, part of the transmission. Uh, God, it's gone out of my head again. Can't think. Head's gone. Head's gone. Anyhow, again, nicely detailed. Again. And the exhaust there, uh, got a nice uh, hole in the top. Probably could be a bit difficult to drill them out because of the uh, lining in the centre, but you can always put a bit of P in there or plastic, is it worth the effort? I don't know. We shall see when we get to the build. Got nice little delicate parts on this tree as well, so they're all nicely done. And again, no flash. Well, it shouldn't be really in a new kit. Um, periscopes are not clear plastic, they're in uh, normal plastic, so we can always make them look good anyhow, it's no problem. But I've got a lot of old plastic, uh, clear ones, so I may be able to mine, find, find some on my spares. We'll see, we'll see. So that's that part, that's out the way, and the next one is part of the casemate and the barrel. But we're not going to use that barrel. We've got two barrels. We've got the 88 and the 128 on this sprue. Uh, part of the case. It looks like the rear. Part of the breech. That must be the box that goes on the rear. I presume. Uh, the mantlet, which has got nice cast texture on there. And let's say we've got the two barrels. We've got a slide molded, slide molded muzzle brake. Which is nice to see. Just a shame about the barrels being like I said, but if you're going to do the 128, which I probably will, yeah, with no problems because you get the 128 barrel. I think. I think it's the 128. So you've got the nice cast texture on the uh, on the mantle there, and there's the slide molded slide molded muzzle brake. And again, parts of the casemate, it looks like it's the rear. And I presume this is part of the box, which has got no texture on there at all. So I will probably have to put some on again. That's not a problem. So, not bad, not bad at all. I think I picked this up for... I think it was 28, 28 or 29 quid I picked it up for. I don't know how I got the price, but it was really cheap, that's why I got it. Uh, the tracks are in this one, which are link and length, which I don't mind at all. Actually, I think this one came not from the one where I normally get them. I think I got it from on AliExpress, one of the uh, Chinese um, suppliers on there. I can't remember the top of my head his name. But I got this here within a fortnight fortnight to three weeks so it wasn't too bad at all right the tracks look really really nice nicely detailed and spare track links there as well let's turn them over we don't appear to have any sinkholes at all not that I can see the track detail is really really nice yeah, there's a little bit of release agent some, on some of the uh, insides of the tracks, but there again, you just uh, hot soapy water, all be cleaned out. The tracks are really nice, you know. You've got the length, so there's no, I can't see any um, pin marks on there, and neither on the actual individual tracks as well, which is always nice to see. And again, on the other parts of the tracks. I presume they have a spare track links on the extended sprue there. And again, 
nice no can't, can't complain certainly can't complain with those uh, and we've got the tub here which I took out actually again basic tub basic on the bottom we've got escape hatches engine hatches or whatever transmission hatches no detail as much on there because obviously you build it up but it's solid enough it's nice plastic it's solid and uh, yeah it's tackham 2019 the actual i think it's 2019 the day 888001 but uh yeah nice not bad at all we'll see we've got all the Suspension arms to put on there and all the other bits and bobs that go on there as well. But you got a nice a nice base to work from. Again, nothing inside there because it's not an interior kit. So, uh, the next barrow is the wheels and where we get into it. Oh we'll find a power. No. Here we go. The wheels and suspension arms. Again, two screws in this bag. Obviously, both identical. We shall put that one down there for now. Uh, we have the uh, sprocket, ring gear. We've got nice detail on the sprocket. We've got nice detail on the wheels. Obviously they're uh, metal wheels, no rubber at this time of year in uh, Germany. By the end of the war we had no rubber left I don't think. We've got, um, we've got the wheel hubs, very small lifting highs, be very careful with those, really small. The detail again is really nice, can't complain at all. We've got the uh, detail on the suspension arms, we've got the shackles there. Um, we've got the, all these really, really fine parts on the bottom, if you can see those. You have to be very careful with those. They're very, very small when you're taking them off a sprue. And the wheels. Uh, detail, nice detail on the wheels and the sprocket. And the return roller, so return uh, idler. And the normal wheels, which are nicely detailed again. And complain at those. We have another bag here which has got the uh, ah, it's got the uh, another gun in here and um, basically the, the cradle for the gun, sorry the uh, internals for the gun, the mount that it goes onto and part of the casemate and the rear as well and another mantlet. And again we've got lovely texture on the there again May add to it, may not see what it's like when I get to build it. I think you may lose a bit of it in paint, but we'll see. Got nice weld seams on there as well. And again, we've got another hatch at the back. Got the hard to get the gun mount on in, on the internal side. Uh, we have another mantlet. Again, got nice texture on that as well. Uh, a few hatches. As well, they're all nicely done. And the rear of the vehicle, again, you've got that nice texture on there as well, but it comes to, will it last with paint on it? We shall see. So yeah, got a nice detail on that. And you say there's the big barrel as well, the whole thing, so, which, I don't, which we won't be using either, so. You've got a few spare barrels in your, uh, spare, in your spares box now. And then we have the last screw. Again, we have the muck guards, uh, rear muck guards, uh, side skirts, exhaust, the plant that goes around the exhaust. And I've got nice texture on these as well. Got the big uh, gun cradle, uh, a few Pioneer tools, MG34, I presume. That's, that's nice. Well, that is nice. A nice, and it's been slide molded. Can we see that? Where are we at? Where are we at? Where are we at? 
There we go, it's quite nice fit, it's quite nice that isn't it? So it's slide molded from that side. Oh, there we are. There we go. That's a nice. And the actual tool, the cable is really nice to say, it's going to be delicately lifted off, but sprue gates are quite small, so which is ideal. There's some really nice detail on those. Can't uh, fault with those. Unless you want to do them, um, you know, not fastened on, you could take them off, and cut them off the, uh, the where the um, gun cleaning rods are, and you can obviously change your, where the uh, core cable is going to lay on your vehicle, just snip the eyes off and that, and do what you want, but you'll probably do something like that, one on one side and have one different on the other side. And again, all nicely done, nice and clean. I've only got the uh, pin marks where they're going to be not hidden, where they're going to be hidden, so that's not a problem. Uh, probably, probably slice some of the skirts down into individual or whatever I need to do with them when I get to build it. Again, oh nice, you, you can't complain, you really can't. And then we have the track, um, the track uh, cable as well. Uh, is nicely done again. It's got nice detail on this, it really is nice detail. So you just have to be careful when you snip them off, and you shouldn't have a problem. You really shouldn't have a problem. Got a few small parts there, got wire cutters, um, I think that's part for the mount for the MG. Uh, fire extinguisher, looks like a part of the uh, starter handle, crowbars, hammers, axes. They're all nicely done. Again, can't can't complain at that. So it's not too much to do a build. It looks like a fairly straightforward build. Uh, let's have a look at the destructions and what else we get with it. Obviously, you got metal barrel to start with. Let's unloosen it. Let's have a look at what we got. Let's just take it all out. Let's start with the barrel, and as you can see, it's the 128 millimeter, the millimeter one, which is a hell of a size barrel. It's nice, nice to be nicely turned. Again, you can it's, it's like I said yesterday, with the price of things out at the moment, any anything like this is a bonus. It really is. It's nicely done. So there's a bit of time and work on the uh, barrel if you're in the plastic one, and then we have a small fret of PE with the engine grills and. Some other little bits and pieces on there, but there again, nicely done. Oops, sorry about the glare. I don't know which to that, but they look nice, nice and thin, nicely detailed. And the decals again, I won't get them out of the bag. You've got four one, you've got the German uh, crosses, one in pink around the outside, and the normal ones as well. And then we have the destructions. We usually tack on blitz uh, very good instructions. Again, you've got a nice picture of the uh, vehicle on the front with the big 128mm gun and the box at the back. There's a bit of gun from there. I might read that later on. I can't get it close enough, I don't think, to uh, for you to read it. If I pause it there, you might be able to. We'll see. I'll leave it like that and see if you can Pause it and read it at your leisure. Uh, first, you know, obviously you've got the first few things, you've got the paint call outs, um, they're all MIG, but you can always, you know, use what you've got. You've got the um, RAL 6011B, which is, I can't pronounce it, a dark track, crystal glass, um, olive garun, dunkel gelb, old wood. New wood, Dunkel Gelb again, there's all that, but you can see with other companies you can always mix and match, can't you? And obviously, you've got the do's and don'ts and what you know how to put decals on and things like that. And then we have the sprue map again that's on the box. And then we start the build as usual with most armor kits. We start on the lower hull, adding the uh, suspension arms and putting the track. Track um, jig on there to make sure you've got the um, arms on straight, so there's no 
wheels lifting off which is a nice idea and again I'm going to add some more little bits and pieces to the uh, lower hole and then we got the transmission final drive that's what I was trying to say before to go on wheels I won't put on at this point obviously but I'll have more cleaned and you know ready to be primed and whatever by then and then you start with a track again which won't be on at that time either put all these together sprocket and whatever but clean all the track beats up but I wouldn't be doing it at that point so far so good um, it's mainly track again on that page so we'll, we'll leave that till last got the shackles going on got the drill in the rear extra drawers in the, in the rear of it and then you're building up the rear plate with the exhausts one thing another jack blah 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 and then we're putting the back onto the chub and the mug guards at the back I think everything's the same at the moment on both builds I presume and then we're starting on the upper tub the main hull uh, again we're putting the P grills the, the uh, tow cables a um, bit of internal stuff for the MG um, the periscopes which I'll have to look into first see if I've got any other ones but if you haven't noticed use those which obviously I won't put at that point until I've sprayed everything um, yep and then we're more of our work on the roof with all the uh, protection for the uh, periscopes and then the put more of the PE on and there's a bolt cutters things like that um, not too sure I mean you have to cut part off the engine cover at the back if oh, I see that's for the MG if you want a big MG on the back I'll have to see if it can maybe use that I think I'm not too sure and then building up the rear doors and putting them onto the rear plate and again engine hatch again at the back with a part cut off starting to build all the uh, breather, breather holes and the um, where the fuel goes the shackles on the back the rear um, on the back of the to the casemate Again, we've got, is this the same? Is it just telling you this? Ah, yes, it's just the same. Is it 21, 22? Let's see if there's any difference. F14. There's a couple of differences depending on what build you're doing, but it doesn't tell you which is which, unless I'm stupid. But basically, it's the same apart from a couple of lifting eyes on the side. And then we're starting off with the uh, internal, you know, the, uh, the standard for the gun. Telling you to do the metal barrel straight into the um, gun thing that you made up, so it's not a problem. Uh, and you've got this rear box, which I thought it was, which is going to go on the back, which is going to cover the engine, uh, part of the engine cover. So you're going to get that block covered and the whole thing there, so I wonder how that worked. No, that worked with that cover or not. I presume it is what I said is the reek for the recoil on the main barrel. I presume you can kill one of the two in, you know, and then we're attaching the upper hole to the lower hole, and obviously, you're going to put the gun cradle inside on the fixing points, um, and then you can add the I don't have to put the barrel in, do I? Yeah, I may as well put the barrel in. The barrel isn't on there, but you can put it on, and then you go from the inside to the front, I think. Yeah, in and out, as you normally do with these uh, vehicles. And again, then we're adding the side skirts and the front mantlet and the front of the uh, casemate. Side skirts, which we probably won't do at that point. Again, we've got the um, options here, which are, are they any different. Yes, you got the uh, different mantlers on this one. So I'll have to work out which is which. I see, yeah, it's easy enough to work out. That's the normal for the 88, and that's the one for the 128. As you can see, it gives you the option. You've got the, obviously the box on the back, and there's no box on the back on that one. So, yeah, just like anything, you just have to give the instructions a good read through before you start the build, and you can go from there. And then we're basically finished. Adding the front thermal guards. 
and then we have some colour call outs. We have this one here with uh, red oxide primer, which is the normal base one, and then we've got the another one which is just the tricolour, very very fine tricolour. Well, colour wise, anyhow, we can hardly distinguish between the green and the brown on there. Um, so that's for the normal 128, sorry, the normal 88 vehicle with the pink decals as well and then we have the rear one which is the uh, sorry the two options for the big vehicle one with the big gun which looks quite nice I probably would go for the octopus one I never tried it I thought I'd probably go for the octopus kit octopus um, paint scheme not too bad does it of course make a little stencil can't we for the uh, for the rings I'll work somewhere. I've got one of those little paper cutters. You know, the start the that you cut holes. I've got some with different varying sizes, so I could possibly make something with one of those. Cut the small one inside the big one. We'll see. We'll see when we get to it. But there we've got that option. And that's the end of the build. So and obviously we've got a few pictures on the back of their kits. What they've got, the Porsche version of this and the early late. Well, I've got a British Bulldog and an F842 Mark 2.1 with interior. More of a modern vehicle. And that's it. That's the end of the uh, unboxing for the Yad Tiger, which is 128mm pack L66 or the normal 88mm pack L71. So that's it. Nice kit. Can't complain at that. It's fairly straightforward. Doesn't look too difficult. Just have to make sure you're reading the correct. Well, correct version there's not a great deal of difference because on the engine back at the back you're just missing a couple of lifting eyes which I can understand now is for the box to sit on properly so it shouldn't be too difficult to uh, to work out yes it looks nice and simple and add a bit of detail to it you know you can throw you you know it's going to be a what if type thing to I think I'll have to read that make sure it was or wasn't I don't think when it was produced, put it that way. I may be wrong. Anyhow, so I say thank you very much again for watching and taking the time out of your day. And I say thank you all my subscribers, uh, new and old. Thank you very much. And uh, next visit, I think I'll have uh, my little grandson again. We'll make an appearance, I think, in the next time. Just, uh, just, just to keep him in with the crowd, as I say. You can hardly hear him, you know, he's, all the time he cries is when he's hungry, which is, you know, not that often to be honest. Very placid little boy, really is, good little boy. So I'm starting to waffle now, so this is Greg signing off, and we'll see you very, very soon with an update on the Storm Tiger and the flatbed build with Paul and Al. And obviously it's for Steve, um, his uh, dedication build. So this is Greg signing off, and we'll catch you very, very soon.